Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, week number three in college football, technically week four, but you know, we call it week three. <laughs> we have a bunch of games around this time. Yeah, yeah, things are starting to get real interesting. Conference play is really, really starting to ramp up. <clears throat> Big non conference matchups are also, you know, coming to an end for the most part as we are starting to shift into October. Conference play is coming things like that. So, you have a lot of big non-conference matchups, a couple big conference matchups as well um, on the slate. Um, and the first game of the week that I'm going to talk about here is Michigan State Miami. Uh, Mel Tucker, he's got the Spartans rolling with a balanced attack and with Peyton Thorne starting now in place of, uh, I forget, dude that started last year for Michigan State, but Peyton Thorne has solidified himself apparently as the starter against a struggling Miami team. I don't know how they're still ranked. The AP has them ranked. The coach's poll does not. And uh, it's it's not looking good for the Hurricanes. They need to, they need to find a way to get something going. And if they don't, it's going to be a long day for them against Michigan State. The other the other real game will be, you know, paying attention to around this time is Cincinnati, Indiana, Indiana. You know, they're probably still reeling from Iowa beating them down so badly. And this is really Cincinnati's first big hurdle to get to the college football playoff. Yes, that's right. The Bearcats have a legitimate chance, but they've struggled a little bit in the first halves of games over the past couple weeks uh, before putting away opponents rather easily in the second half. So. You know, Bearcats, hopefully they run all over Indiana, even though the resume is probably going to take a little bit of a... It's not going to be boosted if they beat Indiana, I'll tell you that right now. So, shades of UCF around here for the Bearcats. So, hopefully the rest of the conference, the rest of the AAC, you know, gets it together. Um, Cincinnati's looking to make a run, and it's first real time... I'm going to get to talk about them, and hopefully there will be a couple times more this year. I need to talk about this team, really, really talented team the Bearcats have. Nebraska-Oklahoma is a game that's going to happen. Um, unfortunately, Nebraska fans, you can't escape this. You cannot escape the 50th anniversary of the, of the game of the century from 1971. Um, but, you know, let's hope... Let's hope Spencer Rattler doesn't put up 50 points on y'all. Let's hope he doesn't on the 50th anniversary. So what Nebraska has to do here is essentially what Tulane did against Oklahoma, which is make big plays with Adrian Martinez and use a rotation of backs like they've been doing the last couple of weeks, using a rotation, and it, it seems like it's been working out. So. You know, they have to keep Oklahoma off balance. Make sure you get make sure you get Rattler some picks, you know, inter intercept that man, you know, a couple times. And why is West why is West Virginia a three point favorite against Virginia Tech? That doesn't make any sense. You know what happened the last time when Virginia Tech was not favored to win a game, right? Y'all remember? Y'all remember? Yeah. North Carolina. Yeah. Talk about North Carolina in a minute, though, but um, in between all of these games here, these early 11 a.m., 12 Eastern games is Purdue-Notre Dame with Jake Plummer's, uh, I think it's his younger brother or maybe his son or something like that, but Jack Plummer takes a undefeated Purdue team who beat Oregon State and who beat up on UConn, poor UConn, and, and this Notre Dame team is struggling. We're talking... I mean, Jack Cohn's playing good, but the rest of the team can't seem to get it together. And if Notre Dame, again, Notre Dame wants to run at the college football playoff, they need to get things together. Lickety split. And run defense has been a big problem for them. You know, just defense in general has been a big problem for them. And, I mean, they can score points. We can see that they score points, but it's just like they can't seem to put teams away can't seem to put a bad Florida State team away. They can't seem to put Toledo away. And we'll see how they do against Purdue. We'll see how they do. Um, and Purdue looks like to be a fun team to watch. You know, so that's going to be really interesting. On um, the big one in the afternoon, oh yes, CBS is back with their SEC coverage. And you know already know the biggest games from 
the best conference is, <laughs> and then the biggest, one of the biggest games of the day is Alabama, Florida, and Florida has a QB problem, a QB conundrum here with with um, Emory Jones and Anthony Richardson. So who will Mullen trot out there? Who's he going to put out there? Somebody's got to do something for Florida. They have to be a little bit more explosive. And again, for Alabama, really the only question is, is how will Bryce Young do to start SEC play? We know that Alabama likes to reload at wide receiver and, and running back, and the O-line is always good and everything like that. And the defense is always good. But um, really the question is on Bryce Young. We know that Miami is not a good team. And yeah, they took, and yeah, Alabama took on an FCS opponent last week. Maybe Saban's still yelling about that, but it's okay. It's okay. I'm going to see how SEC play prepares the, the Crimson Tide for, you know, a long, long season ahead. So late, 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 late in the tonight. We have Auburn, Penn State. Oh boy, whiteout. It's going to be a whiteout. It's going to be game day coming. Penn State's ranked in the top 10. Auburn looking to prove themselves with Brian Harson as head coach. Now, you know, because Al because Auburn's feasted on some cupcakes, you know, and Bo Nix is still a quarterback for the Tigers. But, you know, you know I think this Penn State defense may have something to say about it. You know, Bo Nix trying to be elite because he's not. Um, but Penn State's defense really has to be on point here. You know, Bo Nix has been harassed in the past by defenses at times. And, they, I, mean, they, I mean, there's been a couple of games, you know, I've seen, you know, Auburn with Bo Nix at quarterback where it's just like, it just does not go well. And Sean Clifford has to play better as well. Last time I saw Sean Clifford play was that Wisconsin game in week number one and it was not it was not pretty for most of that game not pretty for him and Penn State just has to get it together you know the conference plays coming up for the Nittany Lions as well you know soon so um, yeah it's gonna be really really fun a really really fun top 25 matchup the second of three top 25 matchups on tap for the Saturday Tulane Ole Miss Tulane is Tulane's an interesting team because they took Oklahoma to the limit, and the Rebels, you know, sure, they can go up and down the field all they want to, but, you know, if Tulane gets a spark going, it might, be, it might get a little bit intriguing out there. It might. It really, really might. So what about Virginia, North Carolina? A little bit more coastal chaos to add to the fire. Um, you know, Jelani Woods... He's been explosive with this Virginia offense. Virginia has been explosive. They beat on Illinois. You know, they beat him pretty badly a couple weeks back, or not even a couple weeks back, last week, in fact. You know, they keep they beat him up pretty bad. And North Carolina, for North Carolina, they need a running game to help Sam Howe out. Sure, he, Howe can still throw the ball all over the place, but the running game has not been there for the Tar Heels. And if they want to, you know, keep themselves in the hunt, you know, for something great, you know, for a chance at Clemson, you know, North Carolina just needs to run the ball better. Um, the weird thing here about Oklahoma State is that they're ranked in the coaches poll, not the AP poll, so I'll talk about this game anyway. Um, Oklahoma State's taking on Boise State out there on the blue turf, and with Khalil Shakir, who's been doing some great things for the Boise offensive wide receiver, and Boise's ball hawking defense has just been there. I mean, they got what eight interceptions to start off the season, you know, these past two games. But Oklahoma State, on the other hand, has really, really struggled. They have barely been able to put opponents away. They they barely beat their FCS opponent. I believe it was Missouri State. They only beat them by like what seven, and they beat to Tulsa by only like five points. So, you know, this is not. This is not a recipe for success for Cowboys. They gotta get it together. They gotta get it together. You know, Spencer Sanders is still a quarterback for the Cowboys, so you know things things just have to get together for Oklahoma State for Mike Gundy's team because Big 12 play is coming, and there's a lot of teams that is trying to stake their place in the Big 12, say that they want to be elite, and Oklahoma State has been trying to prove they are elite. For a couple of years now, and it just has not worked out. 
so they need to get it together. So late, very late into the night, we have Arizona State BYU for a little bit of that Pac-12 after dark flair with Jaron Hall and BYU rolling their last two games. They've taken on Pac-12 opponents in Arizona and Utah, and this will be their third Pac-12 opponent this year. And with Jaden Daniels still starting for Arizona State, he started last year. I think I saw a couple games with Arizona State last year. Um, but how will Herm Edwards and his team do? They're looking. To, Arizona State's looking to prove themselves in the Pac-12. A lot of people, I don't know if a lot of people are really high on Arizona State in the Pac-12 right now, but we'll see. You know, this is a great, great test. You know, right here, BYU's defense has been suffocating the past couple weeks, and you know, this is really my first chance to get a look at Arizona State because, I mean, Arizona State did not play, you know, anybody worth mentioning the last couple weeks. But Fresno State UCLA, on the other hand, is going to be very, very interesting. You know, Chip Kelly, you know, he's still got Noreen Thompson Robinson and Zach Charbonnet rolling, but Fresno State's coming into town. And Fresno State beat up on UConn and played Oregon very, very tough. So they have, so UCLA has to get over this hurdle. They have to get over this hurdle. You know, if they don't get over this hurdle, you know, again, remember, Fresno State only lost to Oregon because of three fumbles. If it weren't for those three fumbles, I guarantee you, I guarantee you that Oregon would be, you know, probably like, probably like only like, you know, what, like top 10 instead of top five right now. I guarantee you that, but I mean, that that was just a hypothetical, and we know that Fresno State did not pick up the victory. But if they do pick up the victory this week against UCLA, UCLA is going to be tumbling out of the top 25, you know, just like that. You know, all that momentum that they built up against LSU may go down the window. It may go out the window badly if they don't beat Fresno State handily. They have to take care of business. It's, it's going to be tricky, but they got to take care of business. All right. That's it. That's all I got to say. So this will be up on Tuesday, of course, you know, and I'll see you all soon for more content, you know, in the next, you know, few days. You know, take care, everybody.